November 22nd marks the 50th anniversary of the assassination of President John F. Kennedy. In his new book, former New York Times investigative reporter Philip Shannon reveals new information about Kennedy's murder. Welcome. Two quick questions first. Uh, is it your belief, after all that you have done, that the Warren Commission was flawed, but their conclusion was right? Well, their conclusion that Oswald, I think all the most credible evidence yeah. points to Oswald as the lone shooter. And, and, and he the, acted alone and killed the president. Well, the, you know, it's a question as to whether or not there were people who knew what Oswald was going to do and whether anybody encouraged him to do what he was going to do. And that leads you to this missing chapter in Mexico City. Okay, my second question. Um, is it the reason that there's so much criticism of the Warren Commission because they were trying to heal the nation rather than look under and make sure there was no stone unturned. I, I think there's truth in that, and I think they wanted to. They wanted to end the rumors that were, you know, wildly flying around this country and around the world. But what you uncovered in your book is that this was preventable. That the FBI, the CIA, they knew about threats that he had made. Oswald had, had made, right? <laughs> the most jaw-dropping document I think I found in the course of, of this research is in, in June 1964, in the middle of the Warren Commission investigation, J. Edgar Hoover writes to the Warren Commission and says, listen, the FBI has learned that while Oswald was in Mexico City, he made the statement, I am going to kill Kennedy. This document then disappears. The Warren Commission never sees it. Made the statement to who? Made the statement apparently in the Cuban embassy in Mexico City. Mm -hmm. um, so that meant that people in Mexico City knew that Oswald was talking openly about mm -hmm. killing President Kennedy. But the Warren Commission was never told any of that. Mm -hmm. And just to point out, he was angry because he was trying to get a visa to Cuba. Right. And apparently he blamed President Kennedy for the, you know, the diplomatic mess between Cuba and the United States that was preventing him from getting to the, 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 the land he wanted to see, which was Cuba. You connect the dots, and one of the other jaw-dropping details, I thought, was the number of documents that just disappeared, right. like this last one. His autopsy burned. The, the, the guy who conducted the autopsy, the doctor, put it in his fireplace that night. Why? <laughs> well, I mean, the big theme of my book is the destruction of evidence. But on the night after the autopsy, the night after the assassination, mm -hmm. the doctor who conducted the autopsy goes home, and he pushes into his home fireplace both the original autopsy report and all of his notes from the, uh, from the morgue. He would claim later this was because they were stained with the president's blood. But you can see where there's a concern that there was something in there that he didn't want to And he said it was his decision and his decision alone. That's what he said. Yeah, but we will never know. We will never know. It's also very interesting that you said that there were so many people who claimed that they had information that they really didn't have. The, the cover-up with the FBI even, that J. Edgar Hoover always refused to say the words, I don't know. <laughs> right. Well, J. Edgar Hoover, I mean, he was a font of misinformation to the president of the United States. Yeah. But, uh, you know, J. Edgar Hoover decided very early on, within 24 hours, really, of the assassination, that Oswald did it, he did it alone, there was no conspiracy that the FBI could have foiled. Because the FBI was in a, in a, in a, in a, in a mess because it had Oswald under surveillance yes. for months before the assassination. They did. He had gone to the Dallas office and threatened Threaten, leave my wife alone. Well, this is the, the story about the destroyed note, but Oswald goes to the FBI field office in Dallas in early November, and he leaves behind a handwritten note for the FBI. So he's face to face with the FBI in early November. And after the assassination, FBI agents in Dallas destroy that note. They tear it up and flush it down a toilet. So we'll never know what Oswald wanted to tell the FBI in early November. Can I go back to the autopsy? Because we'd, we'd known that Jacqueline Kenny, Kennedy had opposed an autopsy from the beginning. Then instead of going to the Army Institute of Pathology, which were the experts in this, he went to the Navy, to Bethesda. Right. And then you say the whole autopsy from start to finish was a three-ring circus. Why? Well, you, you have this problem that, that Navy doctors are much less able to deal with autopsies involving gunshots because sailors just don't get shot like right. as often as, as soldiers do. So they really weren't as well prepared for this autopsy as they should have been. It should have been done at the Army where, where they would have been but able to do What was in the job. final report in the autopsy that leads people to question its uh, authenticity or validity? Well, many things, including the fact that they got the location of the, uh, the bullet wounds wrong. Yes. Right. And that led to many of these conspiracy theories. Right. I mean, the, 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 the head wound, the, the wound that killed President Kennedy, you know, it was apparently wrong by four inches. And on a human head, four inches is a pretty big bit of, bit of real estate. And despite your five-year investigation, we still don't know why President Kennedy was shot by Lee Harvey Oswald. No, the Warren, Commission, the Warren Commission ducked the question of what his motives were.
Philip Sheena, an incredible reporting and great book. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you.